Hey, what's up guys? Mr. and Mrs. Cookie here, and we're gonna present to you a Pack, Pack With, with me, me video. video. Uh, we're going to Europe for six and a half weeks, and we thought it'd be fun to do document our journey, starting with a little Pack With Me video. Um, we're going from Athens and we're gonna go up and around Europe. Or is it this way? I can't remember. Uh, we start in Athens, we go around and come back to Athens. Um, one of those ways. Now, I'm not a very seasoned traveler, Mrs. Cookie is, so I haven't actually packed my bag and so when we go through it together, you and I, it's gonna be a bit of a surprise for both of us, so. <laughs> We'll see what happens, see what she's packed for us. She's probably done a good job, you know, knowing, knowing Mrs. Cookie, she's uh, very organized. Uh, Mrs. Cookie, can you tell us where we're going? Sure, I can do that. I've spent hours and hours researching. She has, it's, it's Places a lot to of go, hours. what to do in those countries, what the temperatures in those countries are gonna be, um, things to be aware of in those countries. But we are doing yeah, a massive trip. We're going to be visiting 12 different countries in the six and a half weeks. It's going to be jam-packed. So we're starting in Athens, then we're doing Greek islands. We're flying to Albania. We're getting an overnight ferry across to Italy. We work our way through Italy to go to Switzerland, where we have a camper van. And then we do an overnight bus to Paris, Belgium, Germany, Prague, Budapest, Austria, Slovenia, Croatia, then back to Athens to then come home back to Australia. So it's going to be pretty jam-packed. Yeah, to say the least. We've done our best, well, I've done our best <laughs> to, pack as, to pack as minimalistic as possible. We're going to be facing some warmer temperatures as well as some cooler temperatures. So we've had to pack quite multi-season which is a little bit tricky when you're wanting to pack as minimal as possible so it's an easy to get around on the trains and buses and just transiting between countries. That's right. Move so, stuff. So, so what's gonna happen is Mrs. Cookie's gonna go through her bag first, then I'm gonna go through my bag next and uh, that's gonna be a lot of fun to actually see what's in there. And uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. Over to Mrs. Cookie. So for starters, I'm going to be taking the Fairview Osprey backpack. This here is 40 litres and it comes with a 15 litre day pack, which I'll be taking as my carry-on. But I'll be going through this one a little bit later. Let's get into this main bag here. So it's got some compression straps along the front here, which if I do fill it up a lot more, I plan to pack pretty light. I don't want to be lugging this backpack around on and off trains and buses and whatnot and be weighed down by something really heavy. Um, so I've, I've tried to pack pretty minimalistic considering we're gonna be going through lots of different seasons. Okay, one of the really great points about this bag is you unzip it and it opens up like it's a suitcase. And so I've got everything in here, um, as well as I've got my airport outfit Put aside as well and I put some things in my day pack um, in my carry-on just in case our main bag gets lost. Let's go through this top section up here. I'll be bringing a tile to help track our luggage just in case it gets lost. We have a little first aid kit here. It's just got the basics. It's got some cold and flu tablets, um, Panadol, um, yeah, basically all your painkillers, stuff if we get an upset tummy. Got a little portable clothesline in here as well and some dip, zip ties and whatnot. Some little essential items. I have, I am packing some leather gloves. I'm a bit of a cold frog, so I figured in places like Switzerland, up on the mountains and whatnot, um, that I'll be wearing these leather gloves. These might actually be a regret taking. I mean, they don't take up heaps of space, but like they're an extra item that I may or may not need. I'm expecting that I'm gonna be getting quite cold, but this might be overkill. But I will let you know when we get back. 
I've packed these grip gloves. Now these are specifically for just one of the days where we're planning to do a Via Ferretta in Switzerland. My hands are really small and because I'm a beauty therapist, they're really soft and I have trouble gripping onto things um, and my hands get really sore and tired. So I've used these whenever I've done any kind of commando course sort of things and these are really great to take for that specific thing. But yeah, they're an extra item that I think is really essential, but for most people, you don't need them. I'm taking a beanie because I'm a cold frog. I feel like I will need this in some of the cooler climated um, countries, more in the north of Europe, um, because we're gonna be there in autumn. I'm taking an extra tote bag. Just, I don't know, throw some extra bits and pieces in it just in case our bags fill up and we buy extra items. I'd watch lots of videos that said it's really good if you're gonna be buying some groceries and stuff to have one of these ready to go. I also have some washing machine sheets. So that's if we're gonna be doing some washing at our Airbnbs and stuff like that. We're gonna be away for six and a half weeks. We're not taking enough undies and socks and everything for six and a half weeks. So we've brought these, they pack up really small um, and they actually smell really nice. They're making my whole bag smell like roses, which is great. Okay, moving on to this other side here. Ladies, I don't need to go into this bag, but we have periods and we need things for that. So this is my bag that includes all of that. I'm meant to have my periods twice while we're away. So I'm hoping this is enough supply. If not, I'll just buy some along the road. I brought a cap for the warmer places. Sun protection is really important. Um, and I value my skin as well. So I really want to keep it protected from the sun. I'll be wearing sunscreen obviously all the time, but a cap just protects you just that little bit more. I am bringing a belt as a little extra accessory. It, it's really thin and small and basically weighs nothing and it can dress up my outfits a little bit more. I am taking a full bag of Lady Shake. Now, I'm taking this because Mr. Cookie and I have been working really hard and saving really hard for this trip, but we don't want to overspend and we're going to be really careful with our money while we're over there because yeah we don't want to we don't want to go over our budget so this in here has 15 meals and we figured we can have this for breakfast or we can have this as a as a lunch and we can buy breakfast and buy dinner in between or we can have buy dinner and buy lunch and buy dinner and just have this for one of our meals until it's all gone and i figured that that will save us just a little bit of money um, along the road and once that's gone I will have extra space in the bag which will be cool in here I've got two pairs of shoes I'm actually taking four pairs of shoes one pair which might sound excessive but I've got one pair of fake Birkenstock sort of shoes in here that I wear in the Greek islands and stuff like that. And then I've got another pair of white sneakers as well that I can wear with all my outfits. But in here I have these really basic kind of slip on shoes. They're a little bit more dressy so I can wear these to the Moulin Rouge um, and out to dinner and things like that and dress my outfits up a little bit without having a heel um, or without having a shoe that's heavy and takes up too much space. And as well, I have these really old, if you look at them, they're pretty horrendous. These old hokers. I'm not super happy with the shoe, but I am actually going to be taking these because we're going to be doing a bit of adventuring, a bit of bushwalking and things like that. So after we've finished all of the bushwalking parts, I'm planning to just throw them out. But this little bag's great because it just keeps them separate and if they get a bit dirty, everything will be contained within this little bag. And again, once I throw those out, I will have so much more space in my bag. I would really like to buy some things while I'm away, but we'll see. Um, I'm also taking this little shoulder bag. Um, it's a pretty neutral color. It was just like 10 bucks from Kmart, so if it gets absolutely trashed while I'm away, I will just throw it away. Um, but I figured it's got a flap over the top 
um, and then it has a zipper. So I thought that, that that being done up, and I've got an extra little security thing on here where I'm gonna actually clip the zipper to the side here. So if someone's trying to get into my bag, they would have to really, you know, stuff around with it to be able to get in there. Um, just an added extra precaution. I'm a little bit freaked out about pickpocketers. In Australia, we just get around with our phones in our back pockets and whatnot, and we never have to think about it. So I'm gonna be super on guard while I'm away, but like just buying these little extra things just gives me a little bit of extra security and I feel a little bit more comfortable um, with all the pickpocketing and whatnot. Um, also some advice that I'd seen online from people about just how to like money saving tips while you're away was bringing these collapsible containers because if you're planning to cook your own food, if you make your own dinner the night before, if you have leftovers from your dinner, you can put it in here and you can take it as your lunch the next day and that saves you a little bit of money um, as well as they're really easy to clean um, and they pack down completely flat um, and yeah, we're both gonna be taking one of these each. Just putting that in here just to save a little bit of space. I'm trying to be pretty pedantic about how I'm packing everything. Okay, for my clothes, I have these two packing cubes. Um, and also I have a washing, a dirty clothes bag. Um, I might go through the bigger one first. So in here, I have a bath towel. Um, bringing this because I've heard that in the hostels and things like that, they'll charge you extra to, to use their towels. And so we're bringing our own because, it, I mean, this is like a big chamois, like it dries really fast. It is a quick dry towel. Um, this might also be overkill. I don't know, I'll soon find out. In this packing cube, in the very bottom, I have a pair of black exercise tights. I have a pair of blue denim jeans. I have a green button-up shirt. I have a, a cream floral dress. I have a simple beach dress that I can throw over my swimmers. I have a printed t-shirt in a neutral color. I have a, a white crop top, a green tank top, black pair of shorts that are loose and flowy. I have a little um, kind of cream printed top. I have a more, slightly more dressy top, which I'll be wearing to the Moulin Rouge. And I have a big, I have a black maxi dress um, that has a bit of a kind of print on it. Um, this I'll be wearing underneath a lot of the other layers and it will look like a maxi skirt. Um, but everything that I've packed in here is very multi-use items. Okay, in this smaller packing cube, I have the kind of more warmer layers. At the very bottom, I have a black rain jacket. So that will be what I'll be throwing on over the top of my active wear on my more active days. I have a thicker orange kind of printed jumper. I have a ribbed black long sleeve. I have a green, more turtleneck, and I have a white three-quarter sleeve top. While I'm in the clothes department, I will show you what I've packed for, or what I'll be wearing. Oh, actually, sorry, I lie. There's another compartment here. In here, I've got a printed pair of swimmers and a plain black pair of swimmers, and you don't need to really see them, but one, two, three, four pairs of underwear, a thicker pair of socks, a pair of more no-show ankle socks, and I've got a pair of long white socks. These I'm planning to wear when I go to Germany. I'm gonna wear long socks with my white sneakers and we're planning to get a traditional outfit to wear to Oktoberfest. Now, because I keep saying I'm a cold frog, it is gonna be cold overnight. It could, yeah, overnight it's gonna be quite cold. So I was thinking these would give me a little bit of extra warmth and still make the outfit look really cute. 
So in here, I've just put, so I won't be bringing this packing cube with me, but because I'm so organized, I like to put aside my airport outfit um, just so I know like these items will be part of my main packing bag once we arrive because I'll be getting straight into kind of summer gear. But basically, I've got just some basic white joggers and inside somewhere. Oh, maybe not. Oh, sorry. I have some little no-show socks to go there. I have a pair of undies and a bra. I have a merino mat pack t-shirt. I swear by merino because it gives you some extra warmth, but as well if you're on a hot day and you sweat, these things, merino never smells like BO. It never smells like sweat. And I am big testament to that because I went hiking in Israel in 2018 and I wore the same two t-shirts for about four weeks without washing them. And I know that sounds gross, but it worked and they never smelt like BO once. So some people hate merino wool. I am all for it when you're traveling. I'm also taking this kind of creamy colored cropped, really casual sort of jumper, something really comfortable for the plane because you know, you're gonna be on there for so many hours and you need to be comfortable. And then I've just got a pair of dark denim, wide leg jeans, super comfy. They're probably one of my favorite pairs and they're quite loose around my waist as well. So they'll be comfortable when I'm sitting for hours on the plane and trying to get some sleep and whatnot. So this and this little bag here is my carry-on. Now this may seem like a lot, but this little backpack is only 15 liters, so it's quite small. And because I've packed some clothing in here as well, just in case our main bag gets lost, I wanna be able to survive for the first leg of our trip at the Greek islands without my bag, if that was to happen. So. I've packed, yeah, little bits of clothing in here, which I'll show you what I've got. But I've also got a big one liter drink bottle. And inside here I have a spring so that I can use this as well to mix up our um, protein shake. Um, so the spring just helps mix it all up so it's not all clumpy. So that is good. This little thing here, this neck pillow, looks really basic and simple like the rest of them, but when you unzip here, and I searched everywhere online to get one of these, you can push all of the beads and everything through this zipper. And then when you zip it all up, it becomes a rectangle pillow. So if you don't, if you get sick of wearing it around your neck and laying like this, you could lay it on your tray table, or if you are on a flight that's not as full, you could actually lay down and use this as a proper pillow. Um, it just mixes it up, it gives you a few different options and it's just still the same item, but a lot more useful. Oops. Sorry. Okay, so in here, we have, I've got some toiletries in here. I've got like our toothbrushes and toothpaste and some sunscreen. I've got both of our toothbrushes and toothpaste because I like to brush my teeth on the plane or when I get into the airport. It just helps me feel a bit fresher. I also like to wash my face when I'm on board. I find it breaks up the trip. Even if I'm really tired when I reach my destination, I feel a bit fresher. It's just something I like to do as well as I like to put some eye drops in my eyes when your eyes are feeling really tired and irritated. They're really good. Um, what else have I got in here? Some wipes, obviously some hair ties and hair clips, like a claw clip. Um, I've got some shampoo and conditioner and things in here as well. Um, but a little hot tip that I had heard from from a friend of mine is you get these little Vicks inhalers. Now, I've heard that if you unscrew this, and obviously I won't do it, stick that up your nose and give it a sniff on both nostrils. Oh, that's strong. <laughs> um, that it can actually help you fight sickness. Um, 
I don't know if it works, but we're gonna try it on this trip and just see, because at the end of our trip, six and a half weeks of moving around, we're gonna be tired and we could get sick. And so this little sucker might really help us, but we'll see. So some toiletries. One thing I always carry is some scales. So I always like to weigh all my bags because the airlines are getting stricter and stricter about weight limits. I always bring some thick socks to wear on board so my feet are comfortable and warm. I've got two power adapters, uh, international power adapters. I've got my fake Birkenstocks in a shower cap because I saw this tip um, from a few other people online and this shower cap's really old so I don't really care if it gets wrecked. So some little sandals, flip-flops there. They're not really thongs. My husband calls any of the, all of them thongs. They're not thongs. So in here, this is my little, what I would call my survival kit for if um, our main bag gets lost. So I've got a beach towel, which is really thin and will dry quite quickly. I've got a strapless bra, a few pairs of undies, a pair of swimmers, a white button up cover up, sun cover up, some denim shorts, a black beach dress to throw over my swimmers and just a really basic black tank top. Now all of those items could keep me going for a while if I needed to, hopefully that doesn't happen, but I always like to be organized. Um, I like to cover all bases. Okay, in this back section here, I've got all of our travel documentation. Um, so I like to have some paper copies of some of, the, um, some of our flights and some of our trains and stuff. I know a lot of the Flix buses are saved on the app and I also have email confirmation as well as that. That's two copies. Where a lot of the trains, I only have email copies. So I've printed a paper copy just in case. I like to have two copies of everything. I just think that's a good way to cover all your bases cover all your bases <laughs> um, as well as I've got some euros in here but shh, don't tell anyone as well as I've got a waterproof cover um, I'm planning to hire some snorkeling gear in the Greek islands so we'll be able to put our phone in here and we'll be able to go snorkeling and get some photos underwater and and things like that the water in the Greek islands is so beautiful, so you definitely want to have your phone with you um, and to be able to take photos along the way. So that is that bag there. Inside this bag here, I've got, again, because I'm a cold frog, I've got my puffer jacket, which I'll take on the plane, just in case I get really cold. Obviously, it packs down quite small, so that's good. Um, I've got my little travel wallet, which has RFID um, protection. And in here I have my international license as well as my passport and my cards and my Australian driver's license as well as some euros. But shh, don't tell anyone. This is great because it's small and you can wear it quite close to your body um, and I find it's quite safe. In here I also have two pairs of sunglasses. I am prone to losing my sunglasses. So I just buy cheap, cheap sunglasses from Kmart. If I lose them, it doesn't matter, but I wanna have two copies this trip because when I went to the Philippines, I lost my expensive pair and that was devastating. In here, I also have a um, portable charger or power pack. I've got my iPhone charger and I've just got a little Lenovo tablet, which I'll be using to watch TV shows and movies on the flight. Um, we are flying a budget airline, so we don't have access to the TVs and the screens and stuff like that in the back of the seats. Um, so this will be my saving grace. Also in here, because we're flying a budget airline, they don't provide food for us. I mean, we can buy it. But something that we're gonna be trialing this trip is just bringing this cup of noodles. It has obviously the noodles and the flavoring um, and a fork and everything in here. So once we 
open this up. All we need from the flight attendants is some boiling water. Hopefully they allow us to have boiling water. I don't really know if this will work, otherwise we'll eat them later in the trip, but we're just gonna trial this as a little snack on the flight. As well as a whole heap of other snacks, as you can see. Some muesli bars and some shaped chicken crimpy, one of our favorites, as well as some of Gary's favorite snakes alive. For the flight, babe, for the flight. And some chocolate covered raspberries. For the flight. For the flight. Now that's all for me. Let's go over and see how Mr. Cookie's going.